I don't know if you're familiar with a variac. A variac allows you to adjust the line voltage coming in from zero to full line voltage. This one's designed zero to 130 volts, which means as you go from 120 up to 130, the amps drop off because they'll step up the voltage. Pay attention when you're bringing up the voltage, but it allows you to gradually bring it up from zero volts to 120 volts. And as you you step it up, it's, it's just a ginormous gain uh, pot or rheostat. When working with tube amps, this is the preferred method, especially when you have something like in this particular project, power supply has uh, burned up, something's going wrong. So you want to take it up in steps to safely come up until you see something amiss. Sometimes uh, at the lower voltage, you'll start seeing something go wrong and you can get it shut down again before you do some permanent damage to the project. But this is a very important piece of equipment on the test bench. On this one, the arrow is black. So I have painted it white and put a little dot there. The first thing you need to know about Variax when you buy them is they're not linear on the scale. This plate is not correct. It is completely wrong. Cur currently, I have it set for 105 volts AC on their nameplate. I'm reading 120 volts on the output. This is plugged into 120. I should read 120 at 120, but that's not how they have this set up. The tap they have inside on the coil, which sets this point, is set incorrectly. So when you buy a Variac, and before you, you start using it on the test bench, you need to do some calibration. To me, the first, first and only calibration I need is, I need to know when I hit 120. So I've, I've marked that. I know now it's at 105. I could make a new nameplate. At 10 volts, it's reading slightly 9. 25 is 28. So it's going up faster than the demarcations on the nameplate. 40 is really 45 volts. 60 volts is really 71. 80 is really 92. 105 is 120 volts. It's important because I want to gradually bring up the amplifier to 120 volts along the way at lesser voltages. I'm just checking and monitoring what's going on with the amplifier but I don't want to exceed 120 volts because that's what the amplifier is going to be plugged into. Other thing about this particular brand, this is the manual they give you. It is not a very good translation. If you understand how Variac works, you're fine because if you depend on this, you're going to be in trouble. It has use and maintenance. Okay, I kind of get that. Uh, or service condition to get this one. This one's good. Without badly vibration and wallow in the installation field. I have no idea what that means. A used indoor parallel connection is not allowed. That's really kind of ambiguous and vague. Here's the other one used in maintenance again. During the normal operation, the regulator should be checked regularly by charcoal brush and make sure that the brush and contact parts won't be more than the wide of two wires. Okay, are we talking double op wires or are we talking 30 gauge wire? Have no idea. So it doesn't matter. If you're depending on their manual, forget about it. It's built okay. The front end of this is on the, the, the can, kind of wompy like, but aesthetics don't really bother me as long as it works. But the big takeaway here is before putting it into use, get a, a proven voltmeter, go through the dial, mark off for 120 volts or 110 if that's where you're testing. 
market, calibrate it, and then put it into use. If I get to 120 volts, watch what's happened. I'm getting nearly 140 volts in. I don't want to power up any 120 volt equipment with 140 volts. It will step it up. Again, this is also not a line isolation transformer. It's, it's just a straight line in. Electri electricity ins, out. There's, it's not an isolation transformer. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.